the run game for Michigan State, is it fixable or are we just doomed for the next 11 games? And Aiden Childs, he needs to improve, but where do we want to see it coming up this Saturday? Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Just visit FanDuel.com to get started. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Lockdown Spartans listeners, thank you all so much for tuning in to Lockdown Spartans, your team in green and white five days a week right here in the Locked On Podcast Network. Please rate, review, subscribe, comment below how you are feeling about the run game, where you want to see Aiden Childs improve, because that's going to set the table for me, the one, the only, Chase glasser of spartans illustrated chase our spartans are one and oh right now we're feeling okay um just all around success right nothing nothing to talk about on this show it was all just glory on friday is that, is that correct? yeah <laughs> yeah what if what if i told you matt that there was a football team from the state of michigan that was yep. playing a scrappy group of five team uh came yeah. out it was in a 16 to 10 game in the second half and uh oh. you know you go away from the game and you say hmm defense is really good but there's some questions on offense uh, but I'm not talking about Michigan State. I'm talking oh. about Michigan. And the difference <laughs> is that Michigan had a defensive touchdown, and instead of throwing a yeah. pick and turning it over on fourth down in the low red zone, you know, they they had a defensive touchdown and punched it in. And then you say, okay, well, there's some questions, but there's a big game in week two, Maryland, Texas. And, sure, uh, you know, we'll go and, and, and kind of we'll see what it looks like then. But just visually, 30 to 10, 16 to 10 looks very different. These two teams yeah. played the exact same game. And uh, there's a lot of questions about about the run game, about Aiden Childs, and we'll get into all that. But oh, yeah. uh, I would encourage everybody to to pump the brakes a little bit. I, I went back and listened, Matt, to our um, podcast we did, I think, last Thursday. And okay. we said, how does uh, FAU stick around in this game if there's a lot of miscues and turnovers? Yep. Check. Check. And <laughs> we said, uh, the only way that I would really have a to reevaluate seriously my timeline about the kind of rebuild would be if Michigan State was just straight up beaten, um, not necessarily score wise, but um, without helping FAU at all. Um, that did not happen. Right. It's it's there was a lot of penalties. There was a lot of missed assignments, yes. a lot of issues, turnovers. Um Yes, it wasn't great, and we'll get into that starting with the run game. But I would encourage everybody to to take a breath and and maybe, you know next Tuesday we can go have a much more real discussion about where this thing is headed. You know, we also talked too that it's really nice having that game on Friday because you could sit back, relax on Saturday, stress free. You don't have to worry about your game anymore. But I think there's also something to you know seeing Michigan State almost puke on its shoes on Friday night, but then seeing other really highly touted teams do it, uh, like Michigan, you just said, mm -hmm. close game in the second half. Oregon nearly crapped the Oregon. bet as 49 <laughs> point favorites at home against Idaho. Yeah. And those are just two examples. So, like, yes, week one can be a little wonky, mm -hmm. especially when you're breaking a new starting quarterback. And I understand that not every new quarterback has to have a bad game for it to mean something. But look, just like Jonathan Smith said after the game, that happens in your first start. Like having with Jonathan Smith back in 1998, having with Connor Cook, which what we've been Connor talking Cook, about. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It can happen, and it did happen. We'll get into Aiden Childs here in a second. Let's start talking about the run game, though, because I, I, I think we've been pretty complimentary of this team. They won on Friday after all. We <laughs> talked yesterday. Hey, you know what? The pass blocking, superb. And it's not just oh, yeah. the Michigan State fans saying that. It was PFF. Mm -hmm. Gave them the third highest pass blocking grade in the nation. My goodness gracious. <laughs> Bill at wall, baby. Um. Right. But look, the run game, um, and I get it, 4.8 yards per carry. And if you want to play this game with me, go ahead. If you don't, I completely understand. You take away that K. Ron Lynch Adams 63-yard touchdown, that average drops down to 3.2 yards per carry. Again, mm -hmm. that is a touchdown run that happened, but by and large, it was a slog. Jonathan Smith acknowledged that in his press conference on Monday. So going to the mailbag, Matt C. writes in at LockedOnSpartans at gmail.com. Love the way he writes this. This is going to set the table here. From my watch, it looked like the offensive line issues were more than more on the players not knowing who to block versus just getting whipped up front. I'd love this to be a question for your film guys like Chase or Al. I know in particular on the fourth and one, the right tackle and the tight end blocked the same guy, leaving the linebacker free to hit Carter in the backfield. It was K-Ron Lynch Adams, but who cares? Uh, mm -hmm. I was on the eight and four hype train, but with Childs in the O-line struggles, it appears that this is a massive rebuild and unfortunately for me apathy is settling in that was not a fun watch let's just take the middle of that question yeah. the run game because mm -hmm. he's not run there were miscues like i'm watching uh the replay on sunday night 
there is an instance where they motion the tight end out, and all of a sudden it's seven defenders <laughs> in the box versus five blockers. Right. I don't need to be an analytical X and O's guys to let you know that seven is going to be five more times than not. There were also late blitzes that weren't picked up by Aiden Childs because yeah. it was so close to the play clock being snapped. It, stuff like that. But you can only make so many excuses. It, point blank, Chase. I'll stop rambling. Can this be fixed in the run game, you think? Yeah, so, I mean, I think there's there's two different – Michigan State ran some gap stuff. They ran inside zone, and then they ran some some wide zone too. And um, the gap stuff was pretty good. The outside zone stuff was pretty good. Yeah. Um, but it was the inside zone. I don't – if it's a Jimmy's and Joe's issue, well, we got a, an entirely different problem on our hands. Massive problem. I yeah. don't think it necessarily was. Now, if you're playing okay. – Michigan's tackles. If you're playing Oregon's defensive line, if you're playing sure. Ohio State, okay, then you might have a, a straight up talent issue. That was not the case here. Um, it was it, less technique. I think it was a lot of missed assignments. So, uh, really, I, I thought the the majority of the problems in the run game were when they were trying to run inside zone, mm -hmm. and you know, wide zone is is kind of helpful in that. Hey, everybody's just going to shove everybody one gap over. Right. If you're covered, you're blocking. If you're not, you're finding somebody who is, whether it's a second level player, whether it's the next player kind of on the line of scrimmage inside zone, you can't mess up because if you get beaten across your face, somebody's in the backfield and you've got big problems. And that happened time after time. Yes. Uh, so the fourth down that you mentioned. Yeah. The, the, you can see the right tackle <laughs> go to down block pivot and go, Oh no, as that <laughs> edge is going past them. Uh, and then you have a bunch of, of, I think a wide receiver and two tight ends on the, Left hand side, yes. and they all air ball on uh, the not the great, goal, right? So it's like that's missed assignments. That's not an inability. It's not Jack Velling can't make that block. It's it's mm -hmm. the missed assignment, and that happened a couple different times. So uh, seventy one, I think Harris um, had some really really good moments where it's you could tell he's he's picking his guy, he's getting downfield, he's making good blocks, and there's times where uh, he just blocked the wrong guy, and those missed assignments that is a hundred percent coachable. Um, I do think against the, you know, like an Iowa or an Oregon or Ohio State, what have you, I do think Michigan State is going to struggle to run the ball between the tackles. Um, I think that that inside zone is going to be a struggle there, but that doesn't mean that the entire run game is nerfed. I think there's a lot mm -hmm. that you can do um, that that can counteract that. So, I mean, there's, there's running outside zone, there's running kind of pin and pull, or you're more sort of gap type stuff where you're getting to the edge and you have a player like a K Ron Lynch Adams, uh, who, who can, you see, make a good cut. He had a really good change of direction in this game. There was in the second half, he, he had a, an outside zone that he was able to um, redirect and, and cut up around a defensive end and turn it into a, a 10 yard run. And now on that touchdown play, uh, the long touchdown run, that play um, you had it's it's they'd call it I, I think GH counter where you have a guard pulling in a the H back the not in line tight end pulling around you're trying to hit that in like the B or C gap and and yeah have right kind of off the left side and he redirected and took it for a touchdown right up the middle the stuff working outside of the tackles or to the the not in the A gap your outside gaps that stuff looked pretty good uh, and it'll be more difficult against. Um, better teams for sure. But that stuff, that's something that you can build off of. That is legitimate. I think inside the tackles, you just have to be good enough. You have to have that threat. There's going to be times this year where you're hitting your head against the wall saying, why are we doing it? Well, you have to, you have to have those linebackers. You have to work inside out. They have to have that in the back of their mind so that when you run something to the outside that can hit. There was a couple times um, that I think there was a, you'd go five wide and it was a design quarterback draw. Um, I think both times it got blown up in the backfield where I, I, I wasn't sure you don't completely know unless you do, if that's, um, going to be a quarterback draw, but there's a couple times where it looked like they were trying to get, okay, it's clear the inside zone's not working. We're going to use Aiden Childs and have him run the ball up the middle. I like that. You know, you can certainly use him like a quarterback power on the edge. And I think we're going to see some stuff like that against mm -hmm. Maryland, um, just because I'm not going to pretend that they used everything in the bag, uh, against FAU. Um, so I, I think that the, don't give up on the run game yet. Uh, I okay. think the offensive line will gel. Um, and, and also Matt, something you and I've talked about in the last few podcasts we've done is, you know, is Aiden Childs going to make it till October, right? Can this offensive correct back in the past pro was pretty darn good. Yes. And also you've got the mobility and, and the kind of wherewithal to move around and avoid some of those hits. So I, um, you know, you want to see better stuff from the inside run. 
And I'm sure that uh, the inside run period in practice this week will not be fun. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's, you're going to see it. It's going to happen. And uh, I think it will be able to improve marginally, um, though not necessarily this coming week. <laughs> but okay. you have yeah. stuff in the run game. You've got your outside zone. Uh, you've got some, some wrap stuff, some pin and pull, the counter stuff. The counter series is good. I mean, you can, you can absolutely – uh, grow from that. And I think that you'll probably see them take that and run with it a little bit more. There we go. And, you know, we're going to get more on this, you know, just what we have to improve on, specifically mm-hmm. at the quarterback position here in a hot segment. First, Chase, yeah. hate to do this to you. I got to talk to the fine folks about eBay Motors because we all know it by now if you've been listening to this show, passion, drive, and patience. Yes, that's a formula for winning championships, and it is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. We're talking superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you are looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or it's your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber, not cash. I love that line. Burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home the huge win. So what are you waiting for out there? Keep your ride or die alive over at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to you as customers. Now let's drag him back out here. It's Chase Glasser of Spartans Illustrated. But really quick, guys, hey, thanks a lot for making Locked On Spartans your first listen every single day. Mosey on over to Locked On College Football right after this and make that your second listen. Again, Locked On College Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Really quick before getting into the Aiden Childs talk, number 71, the offensive lineman, Christian Phillips, cool. which, you know, it's not just you. It's not just me that were saying they, blindly that he did good. Like also the ball knowers at Pro Football Focus, they had him ranked as the best run blocking offensive lineman on Michigan State specifically in the zone graded 89.5 and then gap blocking lower 69.3 but yeah. nevertheless he did do good that's not just us saying that because we like saying yeah. Michigan State blindly yeah there was a couple times on, on outside zone where I mean he was able to um really really contact somebody turn them and mm-hmm. and do a really good job so yeah it's it's that's that's darn good uh if you're you're, you're doing that. That's pretty, pretty impressive. Phillips, not Harris Phillips B- built like a freight truck. Well, yeah, I, I just had to say that, you know, just before no, the no, no, c- get on us and be like, who's Harris, <laughs> but no, it's, it's worth pointing out because you know what? Like, yes, we've been down on the offensive line run blocking again. I, I think we did a good job giving them props for pass blocking, which only allowed seven pressures on Aiden Childs. So it, it's not all a complete loss, but yeah, hmm. we'll have to see where it goes forward. Now, speaking of not a complete loss, I think I've been very firm in my stance here. I don't think there's any question of how I think about Aiden Childs. Yes, mm-hmm. not a great game Friday. <laughs> like right. He'll be the first. He actually right. was the first right. to tell you that in the mm-hmm. post-game press conference. I'm very far from writing him off or even being worried about him just yet. Now, there are plenty of things that he has to improve. And the number one thing that I just want to see him improve on this Saturday, yes, you'd want to see him, you know, knock off the whole checklist. <laughs> but if there's one thing, it's almost a marriage between Aiden himself and then what the offense can do for him. Yeah. Get more of those, what they call the, the rhythm throws, because on Friday, he only had seven passes that were between the zero and the 10 yard mark. Yeah. There were seven passes that were 20 plus yards. Like he was really going for it. They didn't connect. Let's try to get in a rhythm. And Brian Lindgren actually spoke about this today mm. at the press conference on Tuesday that the plan was to get him rhythm throws is what we'll call it on Friday. But FAU just did such a good job with man coverage, specifically on Jack Valley, that they were really never able to find those. Yeah. But nevertheless, like there, there are passes that are shorter than 35, 40 yards, whether you want to do it on third and five or, you know, just to start the game right in the rhythm, which is what I thought they would begin the game with instead of like a 30 yard nuke downfield, which <laughs> turned into a disaster. But nevertheless, like that's just what I want to see improved, whether it's Aiden Child's decision making of to make it an intermediate throw or the offense actually helping him scheme up some yeah. good rhythm throws, like just get his feet wet before we, you know, dive into you know, yeah. just bombing it downfield. <laughs> For sure. You know, it's, I think um, obviously when you're talking about receiver threats, I don't know if state necessarily has a true number one receiver. Not um, yet. March is yeah. going to be that guy. He will be right. Uh, but it's just freshman wide receivers. That's a tall order. Um, so your number one receiver is going to be your tight ends, and and FAU knew that. And mm-hmm. I yes. thought State did some really good work with kind of the boot series, where you're you're taking advantage of the fact that Childs is a really good runner, 
and has that ability to threaten the edge. Um, and I really like the, the rollout, the boot, because obviously you do get an athletic quarterback in a position where he can uh, tuck the ball as a second read and make some plays, but also you're cutting the field in half. Mm -hmm. And um, you're it, it's simple. Hey, I got a running back in the flat. I've got a tight end in the hook curl and a wide receiver down the field. I'm just looking at that. I'm not worried about the backside. It just it makes it simple. It makes it easier. Sure. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, like you said, man coverage, they did a pretty good job uh, locking some of that down. Now there was uh, some times in the second half where it was effective in the first half. It was pretty effective. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, FAU did a did a pretty good job manning up um, some of the tight ends. And also, I think you're seeing, especially in a tight game, the easiest way to lose that game was by turning the ball over again. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> if you try to force a throw into man coverage, uh, if you're directionally off a couple degrees, the easiest way to have a game turn is is throwing something intermediate where, or or you're a young quarterback, you think you have man. Actually, there's a creeper, and you know you're mm -hmm. throwing it right into the chest of a safety. Um, if you're throwing the ball down the field, it can happen where it gets picked off. Uh, you saw it in the first the first play of the game, but I mean that was such a high variance play where it's that was tough. Right? Around. That's, you know that's that's fine. Uh, the throw was a little bit behind him. It's that's fine. Um, you don't predict that a, a PBU is going to turn into a, a, a pinball interception. That I I still was not entirely sold on the. Uh, okay, thank uh, you. I, I don't know <laughs> if I was just a blind Spartan slappy for saying like that. That's a missed call, but uh, okay, all right, I'm vindicated. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I I don't know. I wasn't really convinced of, but uh, whatever. It's like you don't expect that now. Yeah. But if you're throwing deep, a lot of times it's either going to get caught, you're going to get a PI, which happened a couple times, or it's going to be incomplete. Yeah. Um. And I mean, he's got the arm to throw that. Um, like you said, on a third and five, I was a little bit surprised we didn't see more of the quarterback run game. Um, sure. Just because I think having even numbers in the box, it's it just really, really stresses a defense. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw that in a big game this week against Maryland. So, you know, there's there's still some things in the tank there. Um, but Childs, I mean, it's it's I would like to see him hit his tight ends a little bit more. Um, I don't. <laughs> I watched, went through and, and watched the Maryland game again, and I came away feeling like I really don't know a whole lot about their defense, except I think it's pretty good. They've got some good players, but yeah. UConn was so bad. It's it's difficult to um, gotcha. take a whole lot away. But, you know, if you've got Montori Foster, Jaron Glover, those are big guys where if you just you hit somebody on a five-yard hitch if they're playing off off coverage, um, just, just get into a rhythm and, and feel good with that. There was some – I think there was a couple mechanic things too. I'm not – I am not a quarterback mechanics guy. I've never pretended to be. For sure. Uh, but you can tell on the pick that he threw on the out route, they're trying to do a two-man kind of rub route. Um, and Childs does not step into the throw. And he doesn't really follow through. And you can tell he just kind of rotationally arms it. And the ball floats a little bit, and it's a game of inches it gets picked off. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're you, – you just learn – you get better at football by playing football. And that's a mistake. I don't think he'll make twice. Where you know, if that you you get that in the Maryland game, that ball is probably coming out low. It's coming out hard, and it's coming out to the far side where it's either going to be incomplete or it's going to be caught. And that's true. Sure. You learn that by doing. And we have said in every show that we've done where we talk about Childs, the upside's mm -hmm. there, but he's got to grow. And you know, this is still that was his. I believe that was his first. I mean, this is his first year as a full time starting quarterback. Yeah. So you get better at football by playing football. I'm not concerned about him long term. There will be frustrating moments, absolutely. Um, there was a third and eight where you can tell he's internalizing the coaching where he's sitting back in the pocket. He's going through his progressions. The timer goes off, but then he just forces a throw to, I think Foster who was uh, covered and um, it, it was incomplete and they had to punt. I think that was mid fourth quarter. It's like, you're going to have stuff like that, but you can see it growing and it's really gratifying to be able to see, Hey, there's a direction here, right? And there's upward growth and there's an opportunity for him to get better. So you're going to want to see him play better if they want to win the games that they want to win. He's going to have to play better. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's it's college football. That's what that's that's why I love it, because it's not this yeah. incredibly polished product. It's messy. It's it's very stupid. It is. We, we truly have this. Oh, it's the product. dumbest. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. great. You know, that's, that's what makes it so great. It's, it's you have a quarterback essentially icing a game by sliding a yard short of the sticks. Is, isn't sport. it beautiful? It, it is, yeah. It is the best sport. It is, it is truly the best yeah. sport. So it's, it's, he's going to grow. He's going to learn. And I do think there's stuff in the playbook that will maximize his ability that we haven't seen yet. I, I absolutely feel that way. 
Sliding a yard short before his helmet flew off for the eighth time in that game, Mr. Cam Fancher. I hope the uh, equipment team down there in Boca Raton can get him a helmet that actually fits or a chin strap that can keep that helmet tightened onto his noggin. But nevertheless, uh, I got one more thing that I want to offer up about eight-inch house. Then we'll get into, like, you know, some of the offensive talk yeah, here. Sure. But first, I hate to do it. I'm so sorry to do this again, Chase. I got to talk to people's ears off about FanDuel Sportsbook. It's America's number one sportsbook. Lord knows I was lighting up FanDuel over the weekend. Why? Well, because they have the lines, the props, the futures that we are all looking for for this college football season. And if you want to look ahead at this Saturday, Michigan State seven and a half point underdogs in College Park. If you like what you saw from the defense, you think it's going to be one of these low-scoring games, they can stay within shooting range or even top the Terrapins. We'll go on over to America's number one sports book. Again, we are talking FanDuel. Also, guys, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of of payment and bang, you can just cancel at any time. Just visit fanduel.com to download America's number one sports book. Again, that is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Now let's drag it back out here. It's Chase Glasser of Spartans Illustrated. And one more, you know, thing that we can maybe improve on for Childs. And this is going to sound like a joke, like I'm just trying to, you know, go off the rip here at the comedy shack. But how many times in college football this week did we see okay, a 40 yard route? Quarterback throws it 35 times. That means, or he throws it 35 yards. That means the receiver had to stop. The defensive back just runs right into yeah. him and then bank <laughs> pass interference, automatic yeah. first down. Aiden Child, one of his problems was that he was too strong for his own good on right. Friday. He kept missing guys 10 yards the other way, like too far. If he just underthrew one of those, oh my God, just catch the defensive back. Laundry's all over the field. We are moving yeah. that ball 15 yards downfield. So I... I, like again, it sounds like I'm doing a bit here, but it, would it kill you to underthrow one of these times? If you're gonna miss, <laughs> just come up short, maybe just one of those right. times to keep the, the the series going. But nevertheless, anyway, instead of just you know exploiting the rule book and the pass interference penalty, <laughs> what else can Michigan State do on offense? Because after the game, we just did this episode yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was saying, look. I was not a happy camper on Friday. Yeah. I think they kept it way too vanilla. Mm -hmm. I think they do have more to show, and I'm not just shooting from the hip there. I'm going back to what we saw at Oregon State. Yeah, Maybe I'm just misremembering the game on Friday or whatever, but I, I feel like there was a lot more pre-snap motion that they did back at right. Oregon State, mm -hmm. give the defense different window dressing. I So I, I have reason to believe that, yes, they did keep it tight to the vest as far as play calling goes. Am I just looking too much for any sliver of optimism, or do you kind of agree? Do you think that this will expand here in a little bit, especially with Big Ten play rolling around? Yeah, I'd have to imagine it does. So there was actually a – it wasn't a coaching clinic. It was some roundtable thing. But Nick Saban, it was this offseason, was talking about okay. the importance of uh, motion. And he talked about how uh, Texas, and Texas, Michigan, and Auburn, you know, the, the three teams that, you know, either beat them or, or played them really close in – in 23 um, really used a ton of priest that motion and it messes with linebackers and it messes mm -hmm. with alignment and it, it gets people out of position. And there was a lot of that um, pre-snap motion. And there, there was quite a few um, instances where you had, uh, and you saw this a little bit in, in the game on Friday where you have an offset tight end who's lined up in the backfield. It's kind of an H who's then leaking across the formation as, as a split mm -hmm. blocker. Maybe he's leaking out in the flat or maybe he's running up field on like a corner route. Uh, we saw a little bit of that. There's certainly a lot more of that. I can tell you that for sure. Um, and and pre-snap motion, absolutely. I mean, there's out of the bunch sets, uh, moving people around, you saw a little bit, but you, I, I, I have to believe that there's quite a bit more of that. Um, because if you can, any offensive coordinator, if you can win a play based on alignment and, and you can mess up assignments, you can affect the game that way, they're absolutely going to take that. So I have to believe that there's more of that in there. Um, and, you know, sometimes in the first game, you just want to make sure everybody's lined up right. And, yeah. and we're not going to kind of overcomplicate things early in a game that we should be able to go out, kind of roll out the ball and win. Um, and, I mean, to be clear, if Michigan State doesn't get punched on a fourth and one, and if there's not a pick in the end zone, this game's like 27 to 10, and it's just kind Correct. of like, all right, you know, it's they didn't play great, but it's the first game. They went out, they took care of business. They won by, you know, 20 points against the G5 team. It's it, it's not as bad as it looks, and I think there's absolutely another level to the playbook. Um, now, something I will say is that the idea that um, 
and you see this before rivalry games sometimes like, Oh, well, like, you know, you, you never know what they're going to pull out in right. X game. It's like, well, that's not really how it works. You're going to have opponent specific tweaks, but you're going to come up and run your base stuff. Like Michigan state's not going to go come out against Maryland or Ohio state and start running the triple option. Right. It's like, oh, it's just, it should, that'd be great. That'd be fun. <laughs> Mix right. it up. <laughs> right. It's just, but you're going to see tweaks based on the offense you have. Um, and I think adding in motion is absolutely one of those tweaks where if you look at something, within the framework of the offense that you can add in. Um, absolutely. I think you can absolutely see that. And I think we should absolutely expect that um, based on what you saw from Lindgren and Smith at Washington, at Oregon state. And even in the spring game, you know, there was, there was aspects of that that we didn't see. So I think yeah. uh, it's, it's always different when you get in live fire, um, you know, so I think, I think we can expect that. And I will say about the helmet coming off, went back and watched the Maryland game and, and Billy Edwards did the same thing. Um, yes. And, I don't, I don't, you know, Maryland is going to be interesting. I think, you know, you, you think of them as, oh, they've got Tunga Vailoa, they've got Dante Demas, they've got Raheem Jarrett, but it's, it's right. this is a team that's, that's actually pretty solid in the trenches. Yes. It looks like, and I mean, that's I don't crazy. <laughs> Billy Edwards, he's a big, uh, you know, red rifle, shocker, red hair. And uh, yeah, right. he looks pretty sharp. I just, I know him from, he did work against Michigan in two consecutive years. Um, can gotcha. run the ball a little bit. So it's, it, it's going to be interesting. I think the defense is going to be stressed. Uh, a lot more than they were uh, against FAU. I would FAU was was uh, a bit worse on offense than I thought they were going to be. Um, but but the defense for FAU, I mean, they were connected and and they they played with some fire. And I think that state got a really good test and a test that they needed uh, as they look forward to Maryland. So I think you know it's it's I, I even in a loss, I would not be surprised if we're having a conversation next week where you know the tenor of where this is headed is is much different in a positive direction. For sure. Yeah. You know, after the post game emotions wash away and we can right. think rationally about it. Um, now, really quick, just before we get you out the door here and enjoying the rest of your week, I, I didn't hit on this on yesterday's show. I meant to, but I was really impressed Friday with how it, you talk about the most basic thing of football with how well Michigan State tackled on the field. Yes. And look, whether it's the video game over the summer, NCAA college football <laughs> 2025, how hard it is to tackle in that game, or yeah. when you're sitting on the couch on Saturday watching the rest of the games, being like, Holy crap, does anyone know how to tackle? Michigan State, look, they only missed five tackles uh, yeah. on Friday night. Like, they ranked 20th in the nation at tackling pro, per pro football focus. Mm -hmm. I, like, that's that's a really strong start. So, like, again, very basic. It's just tackling one of the key components of football. But you see everyone else around the country struggle with it, especially this early in the season. I, yeah. I thought that was impressive to see. Is there anything Absolutely. else that really jumped out at you? I mean, I think that's certainly one of the things. And I mean, when you go back and you look at last year, how many times was somebody short of the sticks? They oh, out, you know, slither out for a thousand times. Years, right. It's like that that happened quite a bit. And no, yeah. I think you've got a new um an energy around the program. So much of tackling and stuff like that, it's effort and it's it's attention to detail and putting yourself in the right place pre-snap where you're not trying to make up ground after the snap yeah, sure. you only get an arm on a guy, right? It's you're able to really square somebody up and put their shoulder in them. Uh, you know, something we talked about pregame in one of our predictions that I will absolutely, um, you know, I think we should both take a victory lap on is that the defense is going to look a lot more connected. And it did. Hey, uh, the secondary, did. I mean, you got to feel for Dylan Tatum. I mean, that's that's a tough, yeah. you know, because he what he was able to do with just the pursuit angles coming out of the backfield and, and some of the stuff that he was able to do um, from the nickel position. I mean, that's tough uh, to lose him for what looks like an extended period of time. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the secondary, I thought they looked a lot more connected. Um, they were passing guys off more. There were still some busts, like the touchdown. It was um, Nikai. Um, yeah, Martinez. Yep. Yes, Martinez. Yeah. Uh, you know, he just he was he was in man, and he saw the leak come out of the backfield. The motion man, uh, talk about motion, and you know, hammered down yeah. on him. You know, you're not going to get this short, easy throw, and the stock blocker released. It's like you know, that's you, you learn from that. You don't make that mistake again. Um, but it's the secondary looked a lot more cohesive. Um, there was a lot less busts. I thought the linebacker level played quite well. Oh, yeah. Um, you yeah. know, it's, it's, I, I saw Cal Halliday track down a guy in open space. And uh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> look at him like a gazelle. Right. Look at him. <laughs> so, I mean, I thought the defense, it's it looked a lot more connected. Um, obviously, the defensive line, they're going to struggle with depth. They're going to get worn out. But yeah, I mean, the, the Quan Dows played really well. Um, he did. You know, there was a, a kind of a, a parade of guys coming off the edge who I thought played pretty well. So, yes, you know, I thought the defense as a whole, it's still going to be a work in progress. They still need to, to improve the talent in certain spots there. But you can definitely tell it's more connected. It's more cohesive. And they were doing some stuff. I mean, um, 
delayed blitzes, Angelo Gross timed a nickel blitz extraordinarily well. And, gotcha. um, you know, you wound up missing the tackle in the backfield, but stuff like that, where it's like, there is an element of creativity there. You saw, you know, four down linemen, you saw three down linemen, you saw uh, sim blitzes, people dropping off into coverage. Um, they really use Jordan Hall in that way a lot, which is a great way to use his athleticism and his ability to kind of fly around the field. So I thought the defense looked a lot more connected. Uh, and I mean, we're going to find out next week and uh, that trip to Chestnut Hills looking a little bit more interesting, yeah, um, kidding. but you know, it's, it's, you can tell it's headed in the right direction. You can tell there's more of an identity. It's just, this is still a build and it's going to take a little bit, but I think you can be pretty, pretty sanguine about the way that things are headed in that regard. Glad you brought up Boston College going to Chestnut Hill because, man, I, I mean, if you guys didn't see the game on Monday night, I, Boston College walloped Florida State on their home turf. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just, you know, getting ahead of my skis here. To me, that, that was like 75%. The story was like, oh, my God, FSU is just that bad. That, I mean, and yeah. 25% of it, don't get me wrong, is like, okay, yeah. Boston College has a baseline <laughs> level of competence and their quarterback – like if, if that quarterback played on, oh, I don't know, uh, Oregon or USC or Texas, like it, they wouldn't even have the Heisman ceremony. They would just cancel it and already give him the, the title right oh, now. Yeah. Like he is a very fascinating quarterback, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, yeah, I'm more scared cool. than I was, but I'm not like writing that game off completely. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, and, and you should. There's a couple yeah. things. I mean, um, first of all, I mean, there's a lot of MSU folks in the Boston area. So that's going to be helps. Atmosphere. Uh, that Chestnut helps. Hill is a great place to, to catch a game. I've been told. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I think it'll just be fun and to, you know, to play a, a program like that, a, a nice out of conference game, that's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you, you go, you think about it. It's like, well, first of all, that quarterback can explode in any direction. He can go put yes. four touchdowns on your head. Yes. And then the next week he can go throw three picks against the NFC. Certainly. So one, you don't know what you're going to get there. And two, I mean, I don't think you can watch that game against Florida state and have a takeaway other than, Oh man, Florida State is in trouble. <laughs> right? Big time trouble. Big um, time. It's like this yeah. is this is not. They are the the Georgia Tech thing was not a fluke. It wasn't jet lag. It wasn't no. that. There is no. <laughs> deep issues here. So, um, yeah, it's like maybe it's got a little more intrigue than it did. But I mean, I you can't write that off yet. I think that may be the yeah. uh, kind of annual game that happens in week one that you look back at it in week eight and it's like, okay, well, FSU was just really that bad or specifically Uyungle right. was that bad. So we'll see. But I mean, the next, next couple of games, next couple of trips to the East coast, you know, two of the next three weeks, we're going to find out a lot about this team and we're yeah. excited uh, just because it's, it's, there's a direction, there's youth, there's growth, there's energy, there's momentum. Um, and, you know, it, it really starts next week against Maryland. So it's, it's going to be fascinating to see what we find. And I, I continue to, hold that this is headed in the right direction um, with our go. shadow of a doubt. So. Th that's what I'm talking about. L look at that. Come here for just, you know, to talk about the run game, Aiden Childs. Stay for talking Florida State and being inspired <laughs> about the direction of Michigan State football to end this show. That's Chase Glasser over at Spartans Illustrated doing fantastic work. Not the only Spartans Illustrated guy we'll be talking to this week. Our pregame show is, is going to be with Brendan Moore. Can't awesome. wait for that one. Sandwich between that. Guys, on tomorrow's show, Trey Moore of Locked on Terps. We're going to get to know all about his team down there at College Park. But until then, take care of yourselves this week. Love you all. Go Green.